what brought me to Triune? Well, um, I had uh, left the Greenville News after 27 years and gone to seminary. Before I had come here and just looking at it from the outside, this is the church I wanted. It's kind of like if you become a doctor and you want to be a trauma surgeon or an ER doctor because you want to be where the action is. I thought this looked like the kind of church that really lived out the gospel mission, lived out Jesus' commands to serve the poor. However, when I got here, what I found was a lot of the homelessness was driven by addiction. Trying when I, I first got here, I, I'm going to say, was a disorganized. I guess it, it'd be pretty close to anarchy. People did what they wanted to do, basically. Actually, it was the, the, the month before I even started work here, and I came in one day, and a man came in with a two-by-four to continue a fight that had started somewhere outside the church. For the first year or so, we raised an accountability bar, meaning that if you want to come into Triune, we'll be pleased to help you, um, but we do expect certain standards. This is a volatile, violent population. Even though most of the people have a lot of respect for this as a church, and they would never bring that into a church, we're dealing also with transients who come in on the bus every Friday night. And so a lot of people don't know or don't care that this is a church. And so yes, you are gonna have that casual violence played out. Homelessness is a very violent, volatile situation to be in. I was never really scared um, that, you know, I was enraged, I was confused, I was sad, I was depressed, <laughs> I was, a million things, but never really scared. Pretty determined, I guess, uh, because everything she's everything she's ever done, she's put in uh, like a, at least 110 percent. So. I've worked both sides of the pond, quite a few different jobs, many supervisors, managers, and if there is a genius level in preaching, she would be there. Welcome to Triune Chapel. We are so glad that each and every one of you is here on this beautiful Lord's Day. If the last try at sobriety or a job or a relationship didn't work, all it means is it's one more building block to know what to look out for next time. Temporary failure becomes permanent failure only when it becomes a mindset. The main thing we decided to focus on was we looked out there and we said, okay, why are all these people uh, coming to eat meals with us? I think at that time we had five or six hot meals a week. Addiction was just the elephant in the room. I've had somebody say to my face, I would rather do crack than live in a house. And I passed him when I come to work um, panhandling on one of our major arteries. You know, you could give him $100,000 a year and he's going to spend $100,000 on alcohol and crack. I didn't think I was going to last a year. I planned to get out. You know, I just didn't want to be called a quitter. And so I, I gave myself a year. And now it's been seven and a half. One of our guys was here and he, we let him paint my office. He did a wonderful job. I said, make it look like we're in Beach Cabana. And a lot of the artwork you see in here came out of our art room where we'll head to first. They, you know, they said, Pastor, we want you to have this in your office. This is where it all goes on. The artists came to us pretty early on, about five years ago. But now this is open three days a week. Right now they're working on some birdhouses. We don't give lessons. We're real, we're real careful. It's because, you know, you might have people who are pretty violently mentally ill in here and children. And, and then we use the piece beside the pulpit every Sunday. Our artwork today is done by Bernadine Murphy. Well, the art room worked out so well that we opened the music room every Saturday and Sunday. My office is right below this, and I'll just hear all kind of music. If it sounds really good, I'll come up here and ask them if they would play during worship. The bad thing is we still have to lock everything up or it walks out. 
This is the reading room of the library. So just on a, on a Sunday afternoon, you'll find maybe, you know, a librarian in about four. I don't know if this guy's in here. And this is the computer room. People will do resumes, apply online, and learn computer skills. Clemson's MBA program set this up for us. They went to the IKEA store and bought lights, and the, those chairs came from Clemson. At the end of the year, two of the grad students got married, and they asked all their guests to send checks to us. When people come in here, um, to receive services, they're pleasantly surprised that they can get help and also with a smile. Should you ever come here on a Wednesday morning, we'll be giving out about 50 food boxes. There will be people coming in for clothes. As you go through life and when your church wants to open a clothes closet, tell them no. Of course, we've got probably the biggest one in Greenville. United Ministries came over about a year ago and took one look at this and said, that's it, and they closed theirs down. So you see, this goes on and on and on. And this isn't even where people shop. People shop downstairs. Every Wednesday, we see 50 families for groceries and uh, clothes. And they can't be homeless because they get grocery boxes, so they have to have a place to cook it. But a lot of them have children, so that's why we open this. Diapers and baby food and car seats, you name it. A lot of this, I mean, there were big five-inch gaps. All these windows were broken and boarded. Or, so we've done a lot of work in here. And this is where people shop. And as you can tell, we're still trying to get out from our Christmas donations. But uh, this will be all cleared away, and on Wednesday morning, we'll see those, those 50 families can shop, plus probably another 30 of our homeless guys. We we'll have volunteers to help pick out outfits. And this is the food pantry. This is where, on Tuesday, we get a van load from Bala Warehouse. And it's stuff like this, they get the label coming off that they can't sell. And then we'll get gifts from churches or food drives or individuals, that kind of thing. This is what homeless people get, things that can be eaten directly without a stove. Tryon does its best to live uh, the gospel, which is not preaching necessarily, it's showing love for other people. And that's uh, demonstrated here. We have gotten so much support from this community. It, has, it absolutely floors us. Today I had, um, a very well-respected eye doctor come in and he's going to start doing screenings. It amazes me what people are willing to do here.